Let's talk about systemctl, which is one of the two main commands you're going to use to interact with systemd, the other being journalctl to interact with logs in the systemd journal. Systemctl uh, has a bunch of subcommands where the syntax is kind of like systemctl, then the subcommand you want, and then like flags or options. The first one we're going to look at is the one that happens if you just run systemctl. What that's actually doing is systemctl list dash units. And you can narrow that with things like type equals service. And that gives you a list you can page through with the uh, spacebar and quit with the Q key. And that just shows you kind of all of your services and some information about them. Like, are they loaded? Are they active? Are they running? Did they run and exit? If you want a full listing, this is only um, active and running, uh, or at least services that ran. Um, what you might want is list unit files, and that'll show you things that are um, all the unit files, including disabled, masked uh, ones, etc., static ones. Um, this is a much more exhaustive list of all of the systemd units on your system. Let's go through all of the basic systemctl subcommands that deal with managing the state of units. First, there's status. You'll be using this one all the time. And this is just a way of getting the status of a service. In this case, the information it returns is really kind of a minimal set. It gives us the service name, the description that was given in the unit file, the path to the unit file, whether it's enabled or disabled, and some information about if you just do a raw install through the package manager, this is the, the vendor preset would be that it would be enabled by default. Whether it's running or not, it's inactive. Let's enable Nginx. It's disabled, right? So let's see what happens. It executes this command. It creates a symlink from the target that wants it. It's listed at the end of, in, in the install section of the unit file. It says multi-user target wants this, so it's adding this to the place where that actually gets looked up as a symlink, just a symlink to the unit file, right? If that's confusing, here, th that's what this is. Install, fine. If you're going to enable this, then it's wanted by multi-user target, which just translates to we make a symlink to the multi-user target wants directory, which gets looked at when you when the system approaches this target, like everything's up, multi-user login is, is enabled. Well, one of the pre the, the wants directory here contains all the prerequisites for that. And here it just literally makes a symlink of the unit file. Cool, so now it's enabled. Let's look at the status again. You might be surprised that it is still inactive, even though it's now enabled instead of disabled. Well, that is because enabling and disabling something don't actually start or stop a service. They only control what happens at boot. So only at boot time does enable or disable matter. If I rebooted this machine now, then the service would be started before it reached the multi-user target, so before it was finished booting. Uh, it looks like disable is not in my uh, shell history. We're gonna say disable. Nginx again, so it's going to remove that symlink. It's just going to do the opposite. So let's actually start it. Systemctl start Nginx. And now if we look at its status, it is active and running, and we have a bit more information here too. So first off, uh, still loaded. It's still disabled, but now it's active and running. It gives me the start time gives me the documentation, uh, that's actually the same as before, and then it gives us the processes that are running. The main PID, so this would be what's in the, the PID file that it defines in its, um, in its unit file. So in the unit file, there's a path, I think it was run Nginx. So you can see where that main PID is coming from. That's the one that Nginx lists as its main PID. So that's the one that system D picks up and that's because of the type of service that nginx is it's a forking uh, process here's the number of tasks running for it the memory it's taking up the c group information i'm not going to get into that in this um, video and then logs 
So it gives you, it basically gives you a tale of the the logs. It's it'll be like the last five or ten lines. So it kind of gives you a nice snapshot of everything that's running uh, or everything that's going on with the service when you look at a running service. The next command is stop systemctl stop nginx. And now if we look for status, you can see that you still get that log data here, but it's simply inactive now. And you actually have some extra log messages of when we sent the uh, stop signal to it. Now, if you remember in the unit file, there is actually a reload, exec reload um, command defined. So if we started this and then we said, System, C bleh, system CTL reload nginx. That's what would get um, executed, but it's not running, so nothing's going to happen. There is no restart defined. So if you run system CTL restart, what it'll do is it'll do an exec stop, which if it's not running will have no effect, and then it will do an exec start, which will just be running this. All right. So a, a restart is simply a stop and a start. So even though it wasn't running, when we restart it, it will run the stop command with no effect because it's not running, and then it will run the start command. So it'll be just as if you had started it. So those are the main kind of commands you need to know about. Enable and disable, which only trigger at boot. Start and stop, which trigger immediately and have no effect on what happens at boot. Restart and reload, which Kind of do configurable things but sane intuitive things by default status um, and then there's also kill system ctl kill nginx kills the pattern that you put here in this case just nginx the statuses that you might see are kind of varied. Um, you can see a list of them here. They can be active, like you saw when I turned on Nginx. Uh, or did I turn on Nginx? I'm gonna start Nginx. You can see that this is this went from inactive to active running. Um, you might get a status like disabled, enabled, bad. Um, if there's an actual like syntax problem, usually on your unit file. This is if you're, if you're home cooking, uh, artisanally crafting uh, with the finest ingredients, your own unit files, you're going to see a lot of bad statuses occasionally. Masked, if you have masked a unit that is sort of, it exists on disk, but like systemd is going to just ignore it uh, for whatever reason. That's often a useful troubleshooting tool. Static is another status. Um, you can see the status, by the way, with systemctl status long log lines if you want so if these log lines are too long to see then that dash l will give you the full log line you can scroll left and right um, indirect is another status where it's not enabled so or, or actually disabled but another unit file references it so it could be activated possibly uh, linked is a symlinked one. I've never used that. Uh, it's in there. I'm telling you because this is an educational video. And that's kind of all you need to know about system CTL just to get started and do like the 90% of your work interacting with system D on a service management or really unit file management uh, level.